Hi, Nick. This is uh, Philip calling from Switzerland. Oh, hello, Philip. How are you? Hi. Very good. Thank you. What about you? I'm, I'm doing lovely. Thank you. Are, are you nervous about the, the, the premiere or the release of your latest show? Um, no. I get more nervous uh, when making it, to be honest. But once you're done, um, you know that everybody, we have a, a hundred some odd people that have worked together to, to make this project. And you know that everyone's tried their hardest and everyone's worked really hard. And then you just put it out into the world and hope people enjoy it. Okay. What uh, could the world expect from your show, in, in your own words? Uh, I think they can expect a, a genuine Jack Reacher experience, first and foremost. Um, we tried very hard to stay true to the books and the Jack Reacher character. And when I say the books, I mean the world and the tone that the book created, or the, or the books created. Mm -hmm. And we followed Lee Child's lead. Lee Child is the, the compass of this television show. He created this incredibly successful uh, book series. And so our goal was to follow what he created and just give a genuine Reacher experience to the viewers. Okay. So to me, it, the show has a lot of humor, but it's also about trust and loyalty, I guess. What do you think is the, the strongest uh, message here? I think, hmm. I think there is, look, there's a lot of trust and loyalty between Reacher and some of the people that he meets on this adventure that he didn't know beforehand. Mm -hmm. And then he winds up um, really trusting these people with his lives and, and with his life and each other's lives in various situations. Mm -hmm. um, what the message of that is, I don't know. I, th I think that viewers will, will take out of that what they want. But I think that at the end of the day, uh, when it comes to defining who Jack Reacher is, maybe the message is, is Reacher trusts his instincts and his instincts are very often right. He can tell who's good, he can tell who's bad, and he follows that lead. Okay. You just told me you were a little bit nervous during making of the show. What was the, what was the challenge on that project? Um, well, what made me most nervous was uh, I just didn't want to let Lee Child down. Uh, when someone entrusts you with their life's work, you really don't want to drop the ball. So we all, everyone involved in making the show, held on to the ball really tight. And to use a term from American football, we didn't want to fumble and, and mess things up. So that was, that's what I was most nervous about. Uh, as for challenges, just filming during uh, COVID was, was, was challenging. Um, there, was, there were lots of uh, precautions and lots of uh, new rules and regulations that came through um, safety advisors and unions and things of that nature that were important and had to be followed. And it uh, just made it a, a, a brand new type of production atmosphere that we've never had to deal okay. with before. Okay. And I can imagine it's also a nightmare uh, uh, for the budget. I mean, with all these uh, things happens, um, it, it does add cost. Yeah, you are you are correct. It, uh, the COVID protections and and uh, testing and things and and and, and lost uh, lost days to um, people unfortunately maybe getting sick. Um, all of that adds to a budget of a show. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. And you sh you don't shoot in the states. You you shoot in Toronto. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, great city of Toronto uh, gave the show a wonderful home. And uh, we built, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe it's the largest standing set in, in the entire country of Canada. Okay. Uh, we took empty acreage and built an entire town. And it just okay. looks beautiful. All, all credit goes to our production crew. Okay. So the whole town uh, we see in the show is, is not real. It's made, it's built by you. Almost all of it. There are certain yeah. locations we would go to, yeah. but when he's walking through the town of Margrave and he's going to the barber shop and the gazebo and the apartments and all, and the restaurants and all that stuff in town, that was all built from scratch. That was all just artistry. Amazing, amazing. Okay, it, it really so was. I, it really, was. yeah. So I hear Tom Cruise, who did the films before, was, was no longer an option uh, for Lee Child uh, for the show. Why is that? 
Um, I, I think uh, I, I honestly never had a conversation with Lee about that aspect of the show. But when we were sitting down to make it and I spoke with the studio and they asked me what my thoughts on the show were, I, I, I told them. Uh, I was auditioning for the job myself. There were a lot of writers that were trying to get this job for obvious reasons. It's a wonderful book series. Um, but they asked me, how do you see Reacher? What type of actor do you see as Reacher? And my answer was just was really, really big. I just saw okay. a really, really yeah. big. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, look at that, that man. Guy. Yeah, I mean. And you know what's funny? Yeah. He's next to Malcolm Goodwin in that picture. Malcolm yeah. Goodwin is a muscular, strong guy. Oh. And next to, yeah. to Alan, he, yeah. he looks yeah. like a little dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. He, uh, Alan is, uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, that's a guy, yeah. Uh, Alan is like, <laughs> Alan is like another, he's not even a human being. He's another yeah. species. I don't know yeah. what Alan is, but he's, um, I'm not a small guy. And Alan yeah. dwarfs yeah. me, just yeah. makes me yeah, look yeah. tiny. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but uh, to be honest, it's a good choice. I mean. Oh, thank you. I, I agree. Like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Alan's you. you Sorry, go on. Oh, no, I just said Alan's wonderful. So you have written on shows like uh, the, the Sopranos and written and produced on great shows like Law and Order, Prison Break or Scorpion. What fascinates you. you about the action crime genre? I think, I think it's just exciting. You know, listen, I'm never going to commit a crime. <laughs> I'm never going to rob a bank and I'm never going to do a heist and I'm never going to figure out a way to steal the diamond from the museum. So it's nice to imagine how that would get done. You know, it's, it's, it's fantasy. And so it's just exciting to, and challenging to figure out, uh, I don't know, the, just the ins and outs of how someone would pull that off. And then if you do it with a character as interesting as Jack Reacher, uh, where he's solving crimes, that is, uh, that, that's, that's, that's fun. I could do that all day long. It doesn't, it doesn't even feel like work. Okay. And where, where did you get ideas from or inspiration? I mean, for, for shows like this, Reacher and all the others uh, we, we spoke about, you need so many inputs and ideas. I'm, I mean, are you <laughs> sitting there and, and to make, uh, uh, have you all, all the time your Google uh, open or, or do you walk <laughs> through the street or w w what is your secret? Uh, oh, I have no secrets. My secret, the truth is my secret is I get to work with the most talented people in the world. Mm -hmm. And so I will sit in the writer's room and for me, a writer's room is the most magical place on the planet. It's, it's, um, I don't, I don't do any drugs, but I have to assume the feeling I get is almost like a drug injection. My brain lights up. I'm so happy. And I'm working with all of my friends. All of these writers become your wonderful friends. They become like family and you just sit there and bounce ideas off of each other and you go crazy. And what about this? And what about that? And yes, sometimes you have to take a walk around the block because you can't think of anything and you're convinced you're never going to have another idea. And then yep. something strikes somebody and it's, okay. it's magical. It's wonderful. Like I said, it doesn't feel like work. Okay. So my time is almost up. Uh, la very short last question. Your next project is completely different. It's a uh, dog gone. That's, that's yeah. not a crime, I guess. It's a lost dog. No. I... <laughs> that, is a, that is a sweet, beautiful, family-friendly film. And it's um, based on a book of the same name. And it's the story of a father and son who have to walk the Appalachian Trail together looking for the family's lost dog. And the father and son really don't have much in common, except they both love this dog. And I love dogs. I love animals. And it's very, I mean, there's no shooting. There's no crime. There's no chasing. It's very, very different from a lot of the stuff I write. Okay. Okay. So Nick, thank you so much for your time. It was so fun talking to you and very interesting. Again, congratulations to your show. And I hope I can talk to you for another season. Oh, I, I hope so too, Philip. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.